Welcome back to another video from Victorian Studio. I'm Maureen and I wanted to share with you today a curio cabinet that I made using Graphic 45's new By the Sea paper pad. This is just beautiful paper as usual and perfect for this project. Now weeks ago I found this Peter Pan wooden baking set at Goodwill for a couple of dollars. It was unused, brand new in the package. It's dated 1995. I have never seen one of these before and I wasn't intending on using it for baking, um, but for using it for some kind of shadow box or um, display for small items. When I got it out of the box, I was pleased to see that it pulled apart. All of those inside grids um, all came apart, which made it a lot easier to stain. I thought this little box would be perfect for a project for my ensuite bathroom. I had an aquatic theme in that bathroom with some coral and shells and beach glass but I really didn't have a nice way to display it using the limited space in that room effectively. So using this by the C Graphic 45 paper, I thought I could line the back of a little shadow box and insert some of those trinkets um, and hang it up on the wall. So I gathered up a bunch of my supplies. I got out some shells, uh, some gravel, uh, the beach glass, burlap, string, rope, uh, cotton gauze, um, and of course the paper and some other small embellishments that I could put into this little cabinet. So here's the finished project. Um, I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. I um, stained all of the wood pieces in a dark walnut stain and then distressed it using my sanding block. I didn't uh, insert one of the cross pieces so I could have larger sections in the center so I could put taller items and make it a little more interesting. Now the entire box is glued together using E6000 glue. Um, the cross pieces, the back to the box, even the sign and the little post on the right hand side all connected together. All I need to do now is get a hanger to hang it on the wall. So I started with, like I say, the Graphic 45 By the Sea paper collection. This is brand new. I only have the 8x8 paper pad, but it's wonderful. It has a great variety of background papers, cards, borders, um, all kinds of items to be fussy cut, and beautiful vintage images really enjoyed um, using this and I know I'm going to be using it again. So all I had to do was choose some of the images I was going to line the backs of the cubbies with. After staining the wooden box I let it dry, um, reassembled it, glued it all together, then I distressed it with my sanding block. And then I used Tim Holtz's metal corners to put a nice decorative finish on the edge of the front of the display. I also stained and distressed um, the large block of wood that came with that baking set. I think it was to pound the baking items into the squares. Anyway, it was perfect as a post and I wrapped it with some rope that I had gotten a while back, I don't know from what, um, and wrapped it around using E6000 glue. And that way I could also then glue it to the main cabinet so it wouldn't move. I also used a thinner string in various parts of the display on the sign, on the post. It's just kitchen, uh, regular kitchen string. I also used it on the pulley and I distressed it using Tim Holtz's Walnut Stain Distress Ink. I just cut a few pieces, wadded it up, inked it and, and sprayed it with this mini mister, just plain water, 
to make the ink run a bit more and it gives it a nice uh, distressed aged finish. I did the same with this cotton gauze. Um, I just cut a piece out, then uh, formed it the shape I wanted, uh, inked it, watered it, scrunched it up, and let it dry. And I think it makes a really good net that has some starfish on it. These starfish started out as these gaudy little plastic embellishments. Um, this is a different shape. This, it, they look the same. So I painted them using acrylic paints, uh, a tan mixed with a bit of uh, white. And then I also highlighted the pattern using the Distress ink. And they look a lot more realistic than the clear plastic. The Bottle of Sand is one of Tim Holtz's corked vials. Um, this is one of the larger bottles in the set. So I filled it with sand and attached a label using a graphic from the By the Sea collection. I also used one of Tim's Ideologies uh, red and cream trimmings uh, around the bottle as well. Next I began placing some of the items in the shelves to see what would look the best, where they would fit best, where they would be able to be seen, and uh, have an interesting pattern. So I chose items that were lighter, and if they were a darker item I had to make sure that I had a a background that would pop them forward. Like the driftwood for example is pretty dark so I placed a piece of uh, lighter burlap behind it so that you could see that better. So I used both dark burlap in the project and this lighter burlap. Uh, the dark is up here and the lighter one in this section here and it was just a nice base uh, for the items in the front. For the glass, I glued them all in using E6000 glue. Now this beach glass I found at the thrift store, a whole bag for a dollar fifty, and um, it's really neat stuff. I don't know, I guess somebody had been collecting it and just had it in this bag, and you can see it's old pop bottles and uh, other glassware that's been worn down uh, by the lakes. I'm sure it's just from our lakes around here. I have a few metal items in here too. This brass ship's wheel that used to be a keychain. Uh, this brass pulley uh, that my dad gave me. And this porthole that's a beads landing jewelry piece that I used gra uh, glossy accents to attach an image from the Graphic 45 paper of a sailboat through the back. I use Scotch quick dry adhesive for all the papers in the background. Um, that works just great, dries quickly, really nice. And everywhere else I used E6000. So everything is glued down and safe. It's not going to fall out and break. And it's very stable. So now once I hang it up on the wall, um, everything will be safe up there. Uh, for the beach sign, I covered in, in Claudine Helmus multi mat. Um, this is great for making um, paper more durable. What I did was I used my crocodile to punch two holes in the top, and then I used the same tool to insert a couple of grommets and some wire to hang it from the uh, signpost. I then concentrated on making my little seagull. I uh, decided I was wanted to sculpt a piece for this project. So uh, my little seagull is standing on the uh, Pier 45 sign. I started with a wire frame using the same wire. It's very pliable and I made the basic outline of the bird um, especially his feet because I knew that his legs were going to be thin uh, so I wanted to have it nice and sturdy. So I used Sculpey over top of that wire frame and this is great I just sculpted it by hand and then you use boiling water. I use a microwave with a big pot of boiling water and then you just dump it in there for a few minutes and it cooks and cures the Sculpey hard. 
Then I painted it with acrylic paints uh, using the black, white, and obviously the gray mixed together, and then some yellow for his beak and legs. Oh, and I uh, forgot to mention that I also used Tim Holtz uh, Distress Stain, the same one I've been using throughout the whole project, uh, the Walnut Stain. Uh, for all the images, all of the papers, the string, the rope, anything that I wanted distressed, I uh, used that uh, Distress Ink on. So I think that's about it. Uh, like I say, I'm very pleased the way this turned out. I can hardly wait to hang it on my wall in my ensuite bath. And I thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made this project. And I hope I inspired you to maybe make something as well with this beautiful paper. Thanks. Thank you.